Hey, it's the Reckless Retiree, and I am filtering my uh, the dirt I got off the street just at the end of my driveway, and um, I use my vacuum uh, system to just vacuum uh, by hand the dirt, and this is about... Uh, a third of it right there and first I filtered it with a just a screen so that this dirt right there in the bucket is uh, already partially screened and so um, now I am filtering it by hand now this is very slow and tedious and I know of a better way, but I need to uh, raise the money, the funds to buy the equipment. But a better way to do it would be to have these, uh, I think they, they're they like 17 inches in diameter with the same screen. And then you have a base you set it on that vibrates and uh, you just fill up the top and let it go and it vibrates it for you. Um, and it would be, Obviously, with the larger diameter, it would take a lot less time. Now, I also have my system I'm trying to come up with where I have the filters in the vacuum system where it will filter the dirt um, as you're vacuuming it. The problem with that is the, the uh, screens get plugged, and so what I'm potentially going to do is put uh, blow off nozzles at each screen and I'm going to uh, have some way of turning on and off the vacuum uh, and then whenever it's off blow out the screen so anyway I'm in the process of coming up with a way to do that but I get impatient and I want to see if I can find some platinum with you know just using the hand vacuuming method so I got a surprisingly amount of dirt in a couple hours at the end of my driveway uh, along the curbs and there's a lot more out there if I find any platinum in this process then I'll go back out and get more but like I said it's tea so anyway I take this uh, this is a third cup and I dump it in the top of the stack of filters and then I shake it now what I'm completely processing is the hundred mesh which is the very bottom the very smallest but I'm saving some of the other now this These first three sizes seem to be just uh, bits of wood and stones. And I would anticipate the, as did Cody in Cody's lab, I would uh, anticipate that the platinum will be very tiny particles. So your smallest, that's why I'm only doing the smallest. So anyway, I just throw away the uh, larger sizes and they're just about the same kind of a thing, but just a little bit smaller each time. So there's five of those that uh, I deem as not worthwhile at all. And then it's interesting that the 20 mesh uh, has the most, most there. And so I've been saving the 20 mesh in a container and I've been saving the 30 mesh in a container and also the 50 mesh. And then what I do is I put a magnet under the last catch section and I uh, shake it around to attract the magnetic particles 
and then I dumped the 100 mesh into its container. And I do that, sh shake that magnet around multiple times trying to get the, just the magnetic particles, and I put that in a separate container. And that separate container, I want to, uh, the magnetic stuff, I want to get some powdered aluminum and make some thermite. But that's low priority at this point. So then I have this 100 mesh material. And I am, I have a jar with water in it. And it fill, I have this funnel. And so I just dump it into the jar. And um, stir it around. Okay, so then I use my blue bowl, and when I get to that part, I'll film that separately. And I do the blue bowl, and I come up with what I end up with is. The small quantity at the bottom of a test tube, um, which going through the blue bowl is the heaviest particles. The 100 mesh and smaller, and the heaviest of those particles, which should include platinum. And so I have them in this test tube rack and I let them settle, I let it settle for a few hours, then pull off the clear liquid. And uh, keep doing that. So I, I'm hoping that uh, by the time I get done with all this, that I might have an ounce of that material. And what percentage of that will be platinum, if any, I don't know. And that, that's the hard part. That's the part where I, the sticking part is that how do you determine that you have platinum? And what I've seen online you have to do a chemical assay. One way to do is to do a chemical assay, and that is to uh, dissolve whatever's in there with hydrochloric acid first, and then um, once you've got that out of there, then you use aqua regia to, to uh, dissolve any platinum, and then you use ammonium chloride, I think it is, to precipitate that out. So that's a one way to do it. I've yet to successfully do that, maybe because I've never had platinum yet. Uh, the other way to do it, I think, is to use uh, a heat assay where you would um, melt the uh, material with, uh, let's see, what's it called? The word is escaping me. The stuff you add chemicals you add to help it to melt and uh, uh, anyway the the uh, platinum would melt at a certain particular temperature and so if you take it up to close to that temperature and it hasn't melted and then it melts at that temperature I guess that's another way to determine if you have platinum another thing I've considered is taking just the hundred grit 100 mesh material and sending it to an assay office and ask them to tell me what's in it. And that's probably the easiest thing to do. I just haven't done it. I don't know what it would cost to do that. So if I catch up to where I'm at, um, I'm hoping beyond hope that I'll get some platinum in this process. Then I could sell that platinum and have some money to buy better equipment. Because there's lots of other things I'd like to do, but they all cost a fair amount of money. So there you go. And also, at some point, I'm going to start working on my vacuum system and vacuum the on-ramps of the highways. And uh, that's where I think the most platinum would be from people accelerating and blowing out uh, the platinum out of the catalytic converters. So that's another thing I want to do this summer. So until later.